What's going on, golf addicts? Hungover DB here after uh, back-to-back national title uh, title games won by the Georgia Bulldogs. Go dogs! What a performance! Okay, and despite my hangover, I still chose. I still had the wherewithal to realize I should wear a floral shirt because we're in Hawaii uh, for for the Sony Open, and um, so at least I got that going for me. But I have put in a lot of research into these two names. I'm going to give you that are both in the low 7K range on DraftKings, both in the triple-digit outright odds market, which you probably should not bet. Uh, Both really good values for top 20s, I believe. Um, And I think these are two guys who are going to be sleepers. Both projected currently under 10%, one around 5, one around 7. Who knows? After this video, they could skyrocket because so many of you watched this video and so many of you shared this video with your friends that play fantasy golf. You go, hey, you should watch this. No, you don't. You don't. You don't, but you should, okay? Am I a little grumpy today? Yes, I am. I have massive bags under my eyes. Um, I feel 40, and I'm not 40 yet, but I'm close. Um, I mixed liquors last night, which I shouldn't have done, and um, my voice box hurts, you know? What what am I going to do? Did I put a lot of effort into these two picks? Yes, actually, I did. I really did. Um, I'm excited about them, although you probably can't tell. I have low energy today. Low energy. Um, so I'm sorry. So here we go. Let, let, let's let's get into the first pick. I'm going to start with the more expensive guy on DraftKings at a whopping 74 hunch. Okay, $7,400 on DK. It is Chris Kirk. Georgia Bulldog, by the way, Chris Kirk. Now, there's so many of those in the field. Yeah, I had to, I had to pick one, but I didn't pick him for that reason. But let me let me just give you some reasons. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna open up Fantasy National. We're gonna take a look at old Chris at Wiley. He loves Wiley. There are two golf courses that Chris Kirk loves every year. He loves to see them on the calendar. They are circled. They are highlighted. They you know he he he. There's lipstick marks on them from you know maybe he puts lipstick on and kisses them on the calendar. I don't know. That would be weird. Probably doesn't do that. Um, but it's the RSM Classic. And it's the Sony Open. Those are the two Chris Kirk spots. Okay. Now, oddly enough, um, he's he's not one here, but he has two runner-ups at this event: a T5, a T10, and a T27, and one of those runner-ups in the last two years. Okay. He's projected around six percent right now, six seven percent. Um, like I said, seventy four hundred on DraftKings. He's a hundred to one on points bet for an outright, and plus three hundred on MGM which I like that. And let me tell you why. This is key. This is a key point for you betters out there. You top 20, top 40, finish position betters. Um, MGM, last I checked, I think it was last I checked. And I got to say, I haven't checked in probably six months, eight months. So somebody check and let me know if I'm wrong. But last I checked, MGM does not apply dead heat rules on finish positions for, for placement bets. So which is great. If, if you need to know what that is, look it up. I don't have time to explain in this video. But that way, if there's a tie, you're going to get the full payout, three to one. So consider that when you're line shopping. Uh, that in this example, actually, BetMGM is the is the best odd, are the best odds, and also don't apply the dead heat rules for Chris Kirk, which is a, a double. It's a win win. It's a win win. It's a good day. Okay, if you're if you need to be grateful for something today, be grateful for that. Best odds on the board for a top twenty. And it happens to be MGM. You, that normally doesn't happen. Normally, MGM, worse odds, and you have to make a decision. Do I, do I want to take the worst number but get a full payout if he ties, or do I want to take the, the, the better number but risk getting it chopped up a bunch of ways? Okay? Chris Kirk, you don't have to do that. Best number. Um, all right. Here's what I want to look at. A um, couple things with Chris Kirk. So uh, he's fifth in ball striking at Wiley. Because I was looking at, like, Wiley, like, what does he do well at Wiley? Why does he love this place so much? I don't know, but he, he's fifth in this field um, basically in the last 10 years that, that's in this field in ball striking at Wiley. Um, he's seventh in the field in strokes gained off the tee on courses less than 7,200 yards, short courses, seventh strokes gained off the tee. Love that. And I mean, let, let's look at his, let's look at him. Let, let me, let me do something here. Let's see. I, let's see if I can remember how to do this today. Oh dear, this is probably not a great video for you to share with people. Although I would love for you to share it, although you won't, you you won't. Um, okay, here's Chris Kirk, accurate driver of the ball, as we know. Um, pr- pretty good putter, although P- Poe was not great. So next week, starting next week, don't, maybe maybe don't roll with Chris Kirk. Um, but I mean, l- l- 
in 20 in 2022 he has six top 15s he started his year off here at the sony with a t27 uh not too bad even after missing the cut at the at the rsm classic which is the, the tournament that he's you know that he loves he also missed the cut at the rsm classic this past november which is weird so maybe he's fallen off a little bit on the rsm classic you know the the fall that he had here I don't love it. I mean, right, there, there's two missed cuts in there, and and his best finish was a 30th. Not great. And it does seem to – so the, here's the concerns. And this is probably why people are off of him. You know, if you look here at, at just the colors, right, there's a lot more red. There's a lot more red, a lot more light green. Whereas if you look at the, the, the season, you know, from the 2021-2022 season, like, really solid ball striking numbers across the board for Chris Kirk, which I think he can get back to. Um, he, he's kept his card for many years. He's a good golfer. He's got upside. I mean, fifth at the PGA Championship, my work. So, you know, it, it does tend to happen. Um, got, golfers go in cycles, whatever. But, look, you know, he, he, so despite the poor fall, he can also, like, go from miscut to bang real quick. Like, like. Look at last year, 27th uh, Sony Open. Okay, that's a good start for, for your year. Miscut, miscut, 14th, 7th, 5th, miscut. You know, probably got the wrong side of the draw with the players. You know, miscut, miscut, bang, 5th at the PGA. 15th at the Schwab. 53rd, 7th, crappy at the Genesis. Like, he can just kind of rattle off these, you know, uh, these high high finishes, seemingly out of nowhere. So, I think I don't feel smooth at all today. Like I, I feel like my brain's not working. I want to take a quick second and thank our sponsors, Front Nine Coffee. Frontninecoffee.com is where you need to go to get all of the delicious goodness, the coffee for golfers. Okay, small artisan batch coffee that is not even roasted yet. It's going to get roasted when you order it, so it's very fresh. You can pick whether you want whole bean, coarse grind, fine grind. They're going to roast it the next day, and they're going to ship it to you anywhere in the U.S. or Canada within the next two days, so you get fresh coffee delivered to your door. Uh, you know, for golfers, by golfers, it's Front Nine Coffee. So go to Front Nine. That's F O R N T, the number nine Coffee dot com, and use promo code TJ10 to get ten percent off your entire order. Now, this is delicious coffee. Okay, this isn't the cheap stuff that's been sitting on the grocery store shelves getting gassy and nasty, okay? And they're longtime supporters of the Tour Junkies podcast, so show them some love. If you love us, give Front Nine Coffee some love today. Uh, anyway, I don't know if I convinced you to, to roll with Chris Kirk, but I think he's a sleeper, and that's what I try to do in these videos. You know, I try, I try, to, try to give you names that nobody else is maybe talking about. I'm, I'm giving you names that are low-owned. There's reasons there's low-owned. There, 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 there are warts on them, right? There's, there's warts. So, you know, but, but in DraftKings, in DFS, you need leverage. You need leverage, and you need high upside leverage plays. And I think Chris Kirk could do it. He could do it. He, he's a great course history guy, and I think the only reason he's not getting the love is because the recent form in the fall wasn't super flashy. There's other names around him people are getting more jazzed up about. But, um, but we know he fits the mold here, and we know he can get it done here. So I'm rolling with Chris Kirk. All right, before I give you the last play, here's the comment. I want, I'm going to bet on Tom Kim to win this thing because, like, Tom Kim, this place is – they should rename this place Tom Kim Country Club after this week because he – I think he's going to run through this thing like crap through a goose. So I want to bet Tom Kim, but I don't – you know me, I can't just bet him at, like, 12 to 1 where he is. I need to parlay him with something. So give me your biggest NFL lock for the weekend. I need an NFL bet. You know, money line is fine. Like, I, don't, I mean, the Bills are going to win, but, like, give me a – does anybody have an against the spread bet That'll juice my odds for Tom Kim a little bit. I'd love to get him like up over that 15, 16 mark. Uh, so drop that in the comment section. Like, subscribe to the video if you haven't already. And let me get to my final play. And, and this is a guy that I don't think too many people are, are all that familiar with. I think he's a familiar name, but people don't really understand um, kind of who the kid is. But it's Robbie Shelton at 7,000 even, projected around 6 or 7% right there with Chris Kirk. 100 to 1 is the best number outright for him on MGM. And now here's an example of needing to, you know, consider the lines. His best top 20 number is on FanDuel at plus 450. He's plus 350 on MGM. So you can take, you know, you can take a little shorter number on MGM, but be assured that if he, if he ties, you're going to get full payout. Or you can just go ahead and take the plus 450 and pray he finishes T19 or better. Okay. So, and, and not tied with a bunch of people. That, that's what you need. So, um, Robbie Shelton, let's talk about Robbie Shelton. Oh, by the way, he's also, he only has one head-to-head -head matchup right now 
on one of the sharper market leading market making books and he is a favorite slight favorite minus 113 to plus 107 against ryan palmer also kind of a course course horse guy here at wiley um i mean ryan palmer's ryan palmer so it's not not huge this is his third trip here. He missed the cut his first time, finished T25 in 2021 to start his year, so that's good. Um, but a couple things to note about Robbie Shelton. Let me talk about his Corn Ferry Tour day. Well, first of all, like the guy played at University of Alabama, which has a great golf program. I mean, Davis Riley, University of Alabama. Justin Thomas, University of Alabama. Like Tons of good golfers come out of the University of Alabama product. I think he actually played with Justin Thomas. But he's been kind of a late, late bloomer kind of in the, in the professional world. He's, he's had his PJ tour card, lost it. Now he's back. Um, and guys like that, we, we see it happens. Like it, it just clicks sometimes. Right. But his corn Ferry tour season was fantastic. He had two wins. He had eight top 25s, um, four top tens, another runner up finish made 15 to 24 cuts and really good total driver of the golf ball, accurate off the tee, plenty of distance, plenty of pop, um, solid iron player, but Ranked number one on the Corn Ferry Tour in putting average. A lot of people want to talk about Taylor Montgomery's putting, and it is really good, and, and he's come out hot. But the guy who putted better than anyone else on the Corn Ferry Tour last year was Robbie Shelton. Um, also fourth in birdie or better percentage on the Corn Ferry Tour. Love to see that because you're going to have to make a bunch of birdies here at Wiley. So let's take a look, quick look at Robbie on Fantasy National here, and then we'll button this bad boy up. Um, okay. Look at the fall. And this is where people are going to start to kind of turn up on Robbie a little bit. And and he's going to start, you know, getting a little bit of chatter, I think. But, I mean, the fall was solid. Came out, earned his tour card, you know, after two wins on the Corn Ferry Tour late in the year. 21st at the Fortinet to start it off. 15th at the Shriners. Um, 23rd at Bermuda. 10th at the RSM Classic, which I think is a very similar golf course. Look at the putter. Putter popping, that's what we need to see this week, right? We need to see the putter popping. And what what we like, let's go back and look at his previous PGA Tour season. Like, look at this. So, this is the majority of his PGA Tour season here. Look at how bad the iron play was. Just really poor iron play. And even the putter, like very few peak weeks, really one peak putting performance. That was two rounds at the players. So pretty bad. But now look at look at his recent, and I know it's a small sample size. But look at what we're seeing out of these irons. Probably gained strokes here at, at Bermuda. Um, but just much more consistent ball striking, iron play, around the green, putting. Everything's more consistent, more dialed, tighter. I don't know what he's done. I don't know if he's changed coaches. I don't know what's happened. But it's it's appealing for a guy of that caliber. When you're talking about you know, a, a very accomplished college player at a big-time golf program who had you know a, a lot of attention early in his pro career, Battling on the Corn Ferry Tour, seeing changes like that, and, and possibly being on the front end of really Robbie Shelton catching some some fire is what I'm about. So I think Robbie is is worth consideration. Robbie, Chris Kirk, both projected currently here on a Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. on the East Coast at around six or seven percent. Okay, could give you some ownership leverage in tournaments. I don't know if I love betting either one of these guys outright just because that's not really what we've seen happen lately, nor what we've seen happen a lot. Uh, at Wiley, uh, but I do like the top 20 numbers. Consider those guys as a top 20. And uh, listen, give me that NFL lock. Let me parlay it with Tom Kim. May your screens be green and bend over your bookies. See ya.